After we've created a data model, we need to register it with our dynamic data website so it knows about it and can make it possible to do CRUD operations against our different tables. So we'll do that using the global ASAX file. Now if you're in a website project, you'll just see global ASAX. If you're in a web application project, you'll see a global ASAX and then it can have a code behind such as .cs or a .vb file. Regardless, we're going to need to go into that file and because we created a dynamic data website, it'll add in some comments for us showing us specifically what we need to do. In fact, when I created the dynamic data website shown earlier in this module, it automatically opened up the global ASAX file and I pointed out those comments and mentioned that we'll be talking about those later. So what we'll be doing is we're going to find where it says your data context type and we're going to need to rename that to our custom data model type. So whatever you call that, whether it's a link to SQL or entity framework, you'll have to do this process. Now in addition to going in and setting the actual context type that you'd like to use, you can also specify if we'd like to scaffold all tables. And if you set that to true, what that'll mean is every table in your data model will automatically have CRUD operations available. Insert, updates, deletes, we can filter, we can do all those types of things. Now if you're doing administration type screens and you've added your tables to your data model, then you may want to set that to true. But in other cases, maybe you don't want to scaffold all the tables. You don't want to make all those available. Well, fortunately, in those cases, we can use attributes to control which tables have scaffolding and which don't so that they either show up or they don't appear. So let's take a look now at how we can go in and register our AdventureWorks Lite data context that I created earlier and make that work with the, the dynamic data website. And then we'll see the dynamic data website in action at that point. So let's jump on in. To register our data model, we need to open up the global ASAX code file and then add our data model into it. So I'm going to double click on global ASAX and we're going to scroll down. You'll notice that several comments have been added for us here about what we need to do for our data model registration. And these were added right when I created the dynamic data website earlier in this module. So very simple. So if we read through this, it tells us we need to uncomment the line below, which is this guy right here. Uh, we can set scaffolding all tables to true, only if we want to make sure that everything that's in our data model has the appropriate insert, update, delete, and filtering capabilities. It even tells us that if we want to mark certain tables as be either being scaffolded or not, we can add this attribute into a partial class to turn that feature on and off. So we could set scaffold table to true above a table class, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this demo here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncomment this line. So we're going to say default model register context and we need to register our AdventureWorks Lite context. Now how do you know the name of your context though? Well the easiest way is whether you're doing link to SQL or entity framework. If you come in there's a code file that will be generated. In this case it's the designer file. And up here at the top we can come down and see all the different tables. Now all of these are pretty obvious they are the different tables. And here is our data context called data entities. So I'll come down to that. I'm going to copy that into the clipboard and we'll just paste that in. Now you'll notice it's still red because it doesn't know the namespace. So we can either click this guy right here and import the namespace or we can right click and we could say resolve data entities. And that'll take care of it for us and it puts the namespace on front and here is the name of our data context. So over here to the right you'll notice that scaffold tables is false. I'm going to go ahead and bump that down so it's a little bit easier to see. We're going to go ahead and set that to true. Now at this point after saving the file that's all I have to do to make dynamic data aware of what's going on and it'll now go in and automatically scaffold all the tables that we have available. Very very nice to work with. So let's go ahead and test out our dynamic data website and see what we get simply by adding the data model and then registering it with our default model register context call. So I'm going to right click on the project and just to make sure everything's in good order I'm going to right click and build it. And it looks like everything builds. So now we'll go to default.aspx, we'll right click on that and do the standard view and browser. Now this will pull up the data context editor. 
So now what's going to happen is all the scaffolding is going to be done for us. So you'll notice that I can now get to all my tables. We'll go to, let's say, customers. It's now going to go to the customers table, and you'll see that I have instant paging between the different records. Looks like we have around 10 at a time. I can insert a new item if I'd like, and that'll take me to an insert screen. Let's cancel that. We can even come in and filter, and we can do edits. So we can edit this row and automatically even drill down into other related tables that are associated with this and edit those. We can also come in and do deletes. We can do the details, which makes it in more of a vertical view of the actual data. Now, of course, you can go into this because all the code's available. As shown earlier, there's a master page for this. We could change the themes. We can change the CSS. Everything can be swapped out to make this easy to work with and to edit. So just by doing that one simple step, we automatically have admin screens so that we can go in and edit or delete our different records. So definitely a huge time saver. If you've ever had to build this by, uh, from scratch, you'll definitely know that this is a good way to go. It, at least it gives you some starting code. And if I don't like what I have, I can go into the dynamic data folder and we can start to customize things, including the pages, the fields, and even the controls that display the data within this particular website. Before we move on and talk about how we can do some customizations, let's review scaffolding a little bit. So I'm going to go back to Global ASAX, and you'll recall that we added true for scaffold all tables. Well, I'm going to set that to false, and let's rerun the application and see what happens. So you'll notice we now get an error because every table that we had in our model, every entity, has now been disabled from being scaffold. So it says there's no accessible tables at this point. Make sure that we registered our model uh, and that scaffolding is enabled. Well, we, of course, disabled it. So we could come into our model, and we could do what they say right here. We could add scaffold table true. The problem is I don't want to do that right here in the designer. So let's say we wanted to enable the customer. And if I put this in, the problem is it'll eventually be wiped out. You know, we can right click and resolve this and things, but what's going to happen is if we rerun the wizard, some new tables show up we want to add into our entity data model, then this might get wiped out. So we don't want to put it in here. This is a code file we don't want to edit. Instead, what I'm going to do is right click on app code, and we're going to add a new item, which is a class, and just call it customer. We're going to make a partial class. So I'm going to go ahead and take out all of this. We're going to come back into here, and I'm just going to copy that portion. And then we need to put this in a namespace. Now, what namespace? Well, it needs to match. So whatever namespace this class is in, our partial customer I'm making now must be in. And there's our namespace right there. So we'll go ahead and say it's in that namespace. And I'm going to take off the inheritance since that's already done for us. Now if we come in, we can say scaffold table true. We're going to have to resolve that. So I'll right click on it and say resolve the namespace, system.componentModelDataAnnotations. Now we have a partial class that will be merged with the class that you saw here uh, in the designer. Let's go back down to that one. Here's our partial class. And that attribute will now also be applied to our customer. So scaffold table true is now going to be applied, and we should hopefully see that we can at least get one table uh, displayed when we run the web application. So let's try to run this or build it first. And it looks like we build. Let's go ahead and uh, run this now, and we'll say view in browser. And you'll no now notice that customers shows up. So we can come into customers. And we can edit our customers, perform our edits, our deletes, our details, uh, all that fun type of stuff. So that's how you can actually go in and have a little more control over which tables in your model are going to get scaffolded. So this is good for security. Uh, you may have some admin screens where you only want very specific tables to be scaffolded. So if you want to go that route, with the one I just did, we can set this to false. We can then go find the entity that we want to actually enable. We don't want to touch the code file, of course, for the model. 
but we can create this partial class that will get merged at compile time with the partial class that you see right here and that will automatically add in our entity uh, and merge in this attribute to scaffold the table. So it works out very well if you'd like more control over that. So now that you've seen how you can control scaffolding, I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'm just going to uh, rename this to .text so it's not actually used. That'll take it out of the compile process and we're going to come back to global ASAX and we're going to set this back to true for now. Now in the next section, in the final section of this module, I'm going to run through the process of how we can do some field customization. So let's take a look at that.